verse 9, Daniel 7, verse 9, I beheld the throne till thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit. Now, move on down to verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words of words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Now drop down to verse 13. I saw in the night vision and behold one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him and there was dominion given to him. This is Jesus on clouds but not coming to this earth. He's coming before the Ancient of Days who's sitting in judgment. This is the investigative judgment and that power that's brought before that tribunal is that little horned beast. That little horned beast is the apostate Christian world. That little horned beast is the power that is to be unmasked and destroyed in the investigative judgment. Now turn with me to Daniel chapter 8. Beginning in verse 8, it says, Therefore the he-goat waxed very great. The he-goat being Greece. And when he was strong, the great horn, or Alexander the Great, was broken, he died. And for it, and from it, came up four notable ones, towards the four winds of heaven. So, out of one of the winds of heaven, or one of the directions of the compass, there came forth a power from small beginnings, or, in Hebrew, a little horn, which continued to grow in power, or waxed great, it moved southward, it moved eastward, and even moved towards God's holy land. It continued to grow in strength. It waxed great even to God's church. And it persecuted them. It cast some of them down, some of the host, and even some of their spiritual leaders were cast to the ground and stamped upon by the wicked power of Rome. Yea, he exalted himself even against or towards Jesus. Jesus was nailed rudely to a cross by Roman soldiers. Then, referring to the little horn, it says about the Roman power, by him or from him, either way, the daily, the hot amid, or the continuance, that which continues, by him, the little horn or Rome, the daily, or that which continues, was taken away. The word taken away here is mistranslated. The word is the Hebrew word room. And it means to, and I wrote it out so I wouldn't make any mistakes, okay? This is out of the Strong's translation, or the Strong's uh, concordance. It says the word room means to set up, to bring up, to be on high, to heave up, lift up, set up on, take up, rise, raise, exalt, Give up it means haughty or higher or hold up or lift up or mount up or offer up or promote. It means to take off, up, or away. It means to breed worms. Now, which one would you choose? The last one? No, how about second to the last one, take away? I would and I'd take the first ones, which means to set up. It means to absorb. And so we, uh, we let's look at it again. It says that uh, by him, or, or Rome, ne the new center of pagan idolatry, the system of the continuance, the system of the ancient Chaldean sun worship, the system of pagan idolatry was absorbed and exalted. And the headquarters, or the place of his sanctuary, was cast down or removed. What happened to the government? We know that the center of pagan idolatry was moved to another hill that had seven hills. And that hill was Constantinople, named after Constantine. And so it was moved away. Now in its place, another power comes in. In verse 12 it says, and, and host, or the host, God's church, was given against. The word him is not there. Given means to put or to place. It's the word al in Hebrew against, or set beside, or with, or among something. And you can find, I have a whole list of quotations that shows that here with this word against, they have taken the least of the meanings. The meaning should be to be placed among, 
or placed with. And I had uh, Brother Roy Gain. I don't know if you've heard of him. Okay, Brother Roy Gain helped me exegesis out. And, and, and Brother Gain worked with me on this. And they feel that it was a more correct reading. So I'm comfortable with that. And the host of God's church was put with the daily. What does that mean? God's church united with the system of pagan idolatry. The word, by reason of, uh, of transgression, should really be bifashah, which means in transgression. So it really should read this, God's church united with the daily in rebellion or transgression against God. And it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and it prospered. And then the question comes out, how long? shall last this vision. How long will this daily continue, uh, this daily and the transgression of desolation to give the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? How long will this confusion be allowed to exist? The answer has got to be until the investigative judgment, when God will raise up a people to make clear the truth that paganism has no part in Christianity and must be separated absolutely, that there is no union between the unfruitful works of darkness and God's people. There is no union between demons and angels. And that's our work. And so he said, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, restored, and vindicated. And you were raised up to do that wonderful work. It's an awesome challenge that you and I have today. Ellen White makes it clear. This controversy of what constituted the daily almost tore our church apart in the early years. They wanted to say that, that the daily was the high priestly ministry of Jesus Christ. Friends, that's blasphemy against God that the system of Satan should be the ministry of Jesus Christ. They wanted to say that, that, uh, that somehow Roman Catholicism stopped or, or uh, removed the ministry of Jesus Christ. But I want to show you something here, this little manuscript. Ellen White quotes here. She replied, I'll tell you who Melchizedek is, or who Melchizedek was. How many have ever wondered who Melchizedek was? I've always wondered. I'll tell you who it is, she says. He was the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Godhead who took the form of humanity and represented the Lord Jesus Christ to that generation. In every generation, Christ has been in contact with people through His Spirit. Sure, before that time, the Holy Spirit had to, to form, for, come in the form of a human being. But God, since Jesus had died, He can reach out in Christ's ministry through us. We are part of that Melchizedek ministry today. It never stopped. In every age, God had men by which His Spirit moved through. It never was cast down. It never was stopped. The daily is a system of pagan idolatry, and the reason it's called the continuance is because it began in heaven before this earth was created. It came down to this earth, and it caused a fall of our first parents, and it continued. It continued after the flood. It set itself up in ancient Babylon and it continued to Neo-Babylon. It overran God's church and His people. It continued through Rome. It came into Papal Rome and it's still existent today. It is the continuance. And you and I are called that that continuance should come to an end. See? So I'd like to show you these slides and give you a little bit of a sample of some of the things that can be done to expose this in a historical way. Determine if trying to gather the world under one system is considered good fruit or corrupt fruit by Bible standards. What might Jesus say to this question? Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather, division. The division Jesus speaks of here is not one of violence or revolution, but division based on truth versus error. 
Like when hearing the error of those who believed he had come to set up a kingdom on earth, Jesus stated, My kingdom is not of this world. 